Welcome back to The Hive Doctor, your beekeeping mentor. Today, we're going to be covering how to use a wand-style oxalic acid vaporizer. So stick around. Okay, so today we're going to be covering, step-by-step, step, the tools that you're going to need to use a wand-style oxalic acid vaporizer to treat your hives for Varroa mite. Then we're going to go over step-by-step step the process, and then towards the end I'm going to tell you how often you need to treat and use this method to have the most effectiveness in getting that Varroa mite population at a manageable level for your colonies. Let's go over the tools that you're going to need. All right, so here's our Verox brand 12 volt wand style oxalic acid vaporizer. It comes with a long six foot cord, at least this model does, with two alligator clips. And these alligator clips we're going to be hooking up to a 12 volt battery today. That's what's going to heat up this, the bowl of our wand to liquefy and then vaporize our oxalic acid crystals. We also have our vaporizer because we do not want to breathe these vapors. We have our goggles to keep our eyes safe from any accidents, vapors that might occur during the process. And our gloves because this thing heats up. And these specific gloves are tactical style beekeeping gloves. You notice they're short. These are my favorite and I don't, I no longer use the elbow length gloves because these are minimal, they've got a breathable mesh on the back, and they still have the goat skin leather that I love. When it comes to beekeeping gloves, I go a size down. I'm a large, so I got some mediums because it gives me a tighter fit and a better dexterity for when I'm working. And I'll, although I rarely use these gloves during in-hive inspections, they do help me handle the frames better without feeling like I'm all thumbs. And then of course we've got our 12 volt battery here on the ground ready to hook this up to. So these are the tools that we're going to need. So with our site prepared, remember that during this process your safety is your responsibility. Always use the safety instructions that come with your vaporizer. Alright, so here's the setup. Most vaporizers come with a measuring cup. This has a half teaspoon cup and they recommend a half teaspoon of crystals per brood box. So this is a single deep hive body. So we'll just be using one scoop instead of two. You always want to keep your crystals dry. That's why I keep them in this random container. And you want to load these crystals into a cool wand. In other words, you don't want this hot yet. All right, so now it's time to slide this into the entrance of the hive. And I'm going to aim for the middle. This particular bottom board is very shallow, so it's difficult for this to actually go through. Here's what you do about that. You take your hive tool with the hook end, lift it up just enough to get this wand in there without pushing the crystals out. Push it in about to where it's close to the middle of the hive and lower it down. Now what you can't see what's going on inside the hive is that your bees are kind of bearding down along the bottom bars of the frames. And since this wand heats up, and you don't want to kill any of your bees because of that heat, what you want to do is smoke the entrance of your hive first. And what that does, it will cause your bees to start to move up away from the wand as it heats up. So now that we have our loaded wand in the hive, we're going to take a, a rag and plug up the entrance because we want to keep these vapors inside the hive as much as possible because those vapors need to settle on all of the surfaces inside. That being the woodenware, honeycomb, the honeybees, and the varroa mite. And while the honeybees can groom these settled crystal vapors off of their bodies, the mites cannot and therefore they die. I have seen in one treatment 50 to 100 dead mites as a result of this method of varroa mite control. So with this 
towel tucked in the entrance. No bees can get out and no bees can get in. We're gonna go ahead and take our alligator clips and hook them up to our 12 volt battery. Now, generally speaking, red is associated with the positive terminal and black is associated with the negative terminal. We're gonna hook them up one at a time. The plus mark means on the battery means positive. The minus or negative mark means negative and is associated with the black. So at this point, our vaporizer is beginning to heat up. And at this point is when you wanna have a timer on your phone ready for two and a half minutes. That's how long we're gonna let this heat up. After two and a half minutes, we're going to disconnect our alligator clips and let everything stay as it is for another two and a half minutes while the wand cools down. That keeps the vapors in this hive for almost a good five minutes. Now anytime we're gonna see vapors start to come out of the, the hole here that I did not plug up. And that's okay because to give you some behind the scenes information, this is not a live hive. This is just set up for demonstration purposes. And the reason for that is I don't use this style bottom board anymore. But in order to show you how the wand works, I had to use this style of bottom board. Now, as you can see, the vapors are starting to come through the cracks. That's okay. Some are going to escape. The goal is to keep as much of that inside as possible, and you can only do so much. And normally about this time as well, if this were a live hive, you would see honeybees coming out of those drilled holes in the front here, covered in white. And I like to call those ghost bees because they look so white. Those bees have the vapors already settled on them. Now, these vapors are only effective against the mites that are on the bees and in open brood. It kills them, but it does not affect the mites that are inside of the capped brood. So the, the mites in capped brood are safe. And for this reason, we've got to treat multiple times. One isn't enough. And here shortly after this treatment, I'm going to tell you exactly when and how often you should treat using this method. Okay, so it's been two and a half minutes. I'm gonna unclip my alligator clips, clip them to the handle of the battery. And at this point, the wand is still hot, but it's going to start cooling down. You now wanna set another two and a half minute timer, leaving things as they are for that wand to cool down. And look at that. The vapors have actually scared out a wax moth. And sometimes you'll see small hive beetle come out as well. So that's great. All right, so during this process, since you've plugged the entrance, you're gonna notice a lot of your foragers returning to the hive, but they can't get in. And that's okay. They can chill out and be patient while you finish your treatment. So use this time to kind of judge the strength of your colony based on how many foragers and how strong and quickly they're coming back. That will give you a great idea as to the population inside the hive. Now it's time to slowly remove our towel and you'll see some vapors come out, that's okay. Remember your vaporizer is still warm. So make sure you're wearing your gloves. Okay, so we wanna take it out, we'll place it on top. And this particular brand of vaporizer, this can be dunked in a bucket of water to cool more quickly so that you can move on to the next hive following the same steps that we've already gone over. All right, so that's how you treat using a wand style oxalic acid vaporizer. Remember to go over the instructions that come with the one that you order. So let's now talk about how often you should do this for maximum efficiency. So because of the life cycle of the mite and the honeybee, and the fact that oxalic acid vaporizing does not affect the mites that are in capped brood, and I believe that's referred to as phoretic mites, in other words, they're safe from this method, you've got to treat when those caps are open. In other words, when they emerge as full adults. And to do that, I have seen the best results from doing exactly what you saw me do here today. Every four days, I'll do it once. I'll do it again in four days from that point for a total of six times, maybe sometimes even seven. So over the period of a month, I will do this every four days for a total of six times. And I will do this in the spring before my first honey flow 
and then again in the fall after my summer honey flow. You want to do it in the spring so that you keep your mite level down because they usually hit their peak in the summertime. But if you can kick their butts in the spring, your bees are going to thrive much longer and do exactly what you need them to do. And it's going to make your beekeeping experience much more enjoyable. And the reason you want to do it again in the fall is so that you have bees going into winter that have a very low mite count. When it comes to my own winter losses, it's never been because my bees have starved. It's been because I have a high mite count because I've not always used this method. I'll go in to inspect one of these hives in the spring that didn't make it through winter and I'll find a tiny cluster of dead bees covered in varroa mites. And they'll probably have a good 40 pounds of honey left so I know they didn't starve, and with all those mites on them, I know exactly what happened. So if you have any questions about this particular method, put them in the comments below. Everything you've seen that I've used today will be in the description below, links to those tools. Drop me one of these, and don't forget to tell your friends about the Hive Doctor. I'll see you in the next video.